Okay, happy Friday. We made it through another week. Welcome back to Plaza by the Sea. It is Friday, end of the week. Um, tomorrow is an unusual day, Saturday. It is more than two months since we've been in lockdown for the COVID-19 virus. And uh, we are going to have our first social engagement. <laughs> There'll be five of us all together. And I don't think we'll be touching. I don't think there's any hugging or kissing involved. Just, you know, hi from a distance. Uh, and hopefully we'll share a meal. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Breaking our two-month COVID-19 lockdown. Yeah, weird. Uh, so let's get back to the garden. It's a much more pleasant thing to talk about. Um, last week I was talking about uh, trimming back an azalea after it blooms and the one thing I realized after we left that I forgot to mention is azaleas and rhododendrons both have they're from the same family and uh, they both have very small root system so that makes them really easy to transplant and so if you're unhappy with the habit of the plant the way it's positioned the way it stands you can change that easily and I'm going to demonstrate now and of course the demonstration's not going to go well because something will go wrong but we'll see okay so here we go uh, get to the roots which are way back here set my shovel excuse my butt been in the ground for I would say 25 years maybe it's an old azalea but still you can see by the way I'm digging that the root system is pretty small um, I would not advise doing this at the height of summer or even in dry weather stick to rainy weather uh, the soil is very moist right now and uh, we got two days of rain coming. Oh no, it's fighting me. gonna give this a 180 rotation with some sedum attached. There we go. Whew. Now that's a dog's breakfast. Okay, we got some sedum attached here. Doesn't want to move. We got a hydrangea branch. for this azalea will be standing tall something like that not leaning out over the lawn so much but more of a upright tree that looks good actually uh, now there's a bit of a hole in the back so we'll have to infill with fresh soil there um, I'm going to ditch this sedum there's plenty of it over here and there's another hydrangea, broken hydrangea branch. Now we've got a New Guinea impatient right here that'll be happy that we're no longer crowding it. Uh. Okay, hammer down that root system. Now many plants of the similar size and age, you just can't do that too. They don't like it. The root system's way bigger. You end up cutting off all these toes. Uh, then they go into shock. Um, 
this might go into shock, but I don't expect it to. I think it will be... It won't even notice. <laughs> uh, if you recall, last week, I think, I showed you a giant blooming rhododendron that I had moved 50 feet. Um, yeah, that was a huge job, and it was done in the middle of the summer, and that was more than five years ago, and it just bloomed beautifully. Um, so, it is possible to move really big ones by hand, uh, just using a come-along. Okay, so I'll tweet that later. Um, I just want to show you one more thing as part of the uh, part of the video. This is a part of me you don't know about yet. Uh, I make sculpture and paintings. Um, and a lot of the sculpture I make is for outdoor environments, and there's one here on the property. So I'm going to show you that one, and we're going to bring a little clippers because it's sort of hidden right now from Solomon's seal. So come with me. I will move you. Pardon me. Don't bump your head. Okay, we're moving over here. Ha, huh, okay. Uh, you can just barely see it in there. A little closer. Oh, there's there's shameless advertisement for my gardening service. Uh, okay, uh, that's about. Whoops! Don't tip over. Okay. There we go. All right. So in the foreground we have a hot lips uh, salvia which is about to turn all red and then a few weeks later it goes red and white it's a really cool salvia. I think it's my favorite salvia and this is from last year and it's already really thick then here in the midground this is uh, Solomon seal which is just finishing so we're gonna trim down a bunch of it to expose the sculpture which is back there now the sculpture is actually the <laughs> the exhaust plume of a rocket uh, particularly a rocket destined for Mars because uh, a few years ago I was so inspired by Elon Musk's uh, mission to Mars plans I just thought they were fantastic and I really hope that they happen. Of course, everything's up in the air now. Um, so this was below the rocket sculpture. Well, you really can't see it yet, can you? <laughs> it's hidden. Um, you must be cringing at all this Solomon seal getting wasted. Uh, there's so much of it here. There's tons. Uh, and I'll probably put some of it in a vase because it, it, it is a really good cut flower. Wow, we got humans going by. Um, this is normally a very busy street. Normally the traffic would drown us out, but they've cut it off to cars mostly, and it's just bicycles and pedestrians, which is cool. I hope it is permanent. That would be awesome. Uh, okay, so the sculpture's a little more visible now. Um, more like tunnel vision than anything. Now you can see coming out of the top of the rocket plume is tall grass and that's going to be six feet high uh, with red flowers in September. It's a type of designer pompous, don't you know? Pompous is right. Okay. Uh, can you see anything? Let me check your lens. Oh, well, a little bit. Okay, that's it for me today. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.